Hello my friends and welcome back. It's Thursday and as I promised you on Monday, we are going to survive the hell out of this week together. Only one more day to go. And we have different news today. Sad news, happy news, funny news and stupid news. And I'm going to begin with stupid, funny, slash happy, I don't know how to call it. It's the catastrophe in Russia. There are different dams breaking in Russia right now due to the flooding water, due to the fact that A, they were constructed, even the modern ones, they were new, but they were constructed with corruption, meaning that the money allocated was used to buy cheaper materials and the rest of the money was put to the pocket to buy a Mercedes S-Class from Kazakhstan, you know, circumventing the sanctions or something. Let's first go to Orenburg. This is not Orsk, what I've already talked about. But this is a completely new Russian city of the population, 500,000. And this city you can see on the screen, it is completely underwater. Now this is very close to Kazakhstan border and right now it's snow melting time in Russia. It's spring thawing water time, that's how they call it, big water time. <laughs> Excuse me for my very primitive explanation of this, but you know, snow melts and big water comes and your cities usually, in Europe for example, have infrastructure built out for this extreme pressure high water time. Every city is ready for it because you can be ready for it. That's what you do. You prepare for it. You build proper infrastructure for it. Not in Russia. All of this was built in the Soviet times and it has not been maintained. Meaning that this city of half a million people is now fully flooded. Look at it. Flooded meaning the first floors of every house in this city are underwater. Here we have another video from the ground of Orenburg. It's, it's a big city. I mean, Estonia's second biggest city is only 100,000 people. The biggest city, its capital Tallinn, is 500,000 people. As big as this city. So I could imagine my own city looking outside the window looking like this if it were Russia. It doesn't happen in Estonia because yes, we do have the same rivers, they're flooding. I mean, we have rivers, right? Everybody does. They are flooding right now, but we are in the European Union. Our water blockading infrastructure has standards that are very high, <laughs> the highest in the world actually. So we have to prepare for this by law. Now a little taste for you what an Orenburg citizen feels. She just lost uh, all of her belongings, her house, because even if the house is not fully destroyed, the water damage is so vast, you have to capitally renovate the house, which is not done in Russia almost ever. So you pretty much can say that she lost her house, car, everything. And let's see how she feels. This is our good morning. This is our old house. And this is our new house. We live on the roof. <laughs> they live on the roof. Garden community Zarya. Everyone drifted away. Our mortgaged houses. Mortgage. Like, people in the West seem to forget Russia is a capitalist country fully capitalist country. There's nothing communist about it. It is run by big companies, which is are owned by oligarchs, which are friends of Putin. It's fully biggest capitalist country. Goal of that country is to make money to buy more weapons to destroy Ukraine. So it's this one simple sentence. They have mortgages like the West. Every Russian citizen almost has the, since they don't have much money, the only way they can buy houses is with mortgages. So they take out a huge loan, much like in Germany or America or in Estonia, and they buy the house only that in Russia if something like this happens you're screwed you have to pay the loan but your house is screwed and the state doesn't do anything to help you at all and in America and Germany at least if these things happen they don't really happen that often because measures have been taken to fight against them like I just said the state cares and tries to prepare for them in Russia they just the state doesn't care yeah take out a mortgage Banks will get richer, they're owned by oligarchs anyway, and the money goes to fighting Ukraine. But if something happens to the house, nobody cares in Russia. Now people will be paying for this for 30 years. Whoa. For this, for your house that you just mortgaged and you have to capitally renovate it. Like you have to, water damage is a thing. You know water damage, right? You, you gotta fix everything. Oh, sad. It is. It is life in Russia. This is Russia, just this whole situation. My friends, but look at this. 
situation. This is a Russian man in Orenburg, and suddenly, Zaibis, my friend, you know why? Because Ivan can now fish in the living room. Look at this. There's an actual fish in his living room. If I fast forward, maybe I can show it to you. Русский мир, блядь, заебись нихуя. From the living room, they're like, oh yeah, big flood happened, I lost everything, mortgage, I have to pay 30 years, slave of the bank, oh, but I can fish from my living room, welcome to Russia. And now, my friends, of course, I want to show you what the Russian local government, of course, it's Putin-minded, because every local government in everywhere Russia is Putin-minded, otherwise they couldn't be in their positions. What do they do for this catastrophe? This is one of the Najalniks, the leader guys of the local government. He films the disaster from the plains, like, oh, look, a government has overview of what is happening. We're going to fix it. Don't worry, my friends. We have a plan. And this plan is Orthodox monks chanting from the plain uh, to, to make the water go away, taking these icons and throwing holy water at the water down below to make it go away. With the help of God. This is Russia. This is the cheapest way they can fix the problems because these monks, well, they don't get paid because they're monks, right? They get food. So it's the cheapest way. Putin's two pillars, war and fanatical religion. This is how he governs the country. Fear and war and fanatical religion. Yeah, if anything bad happens in Russia, you can use fanatical religion. If uh, you want to do something outside the country, you use war. And this is how you stay in power. And in this instance, we can see fanatical religion fixing all of the issues in Russia. You couldn't make this stuff up, my friends. I'm not making... Look, this is what they officially post, the local government. They're proud about this action. And now, my friends, finally, to sum up this topic, I'll f watch a summarizing video for you. I read the subtitles so we all know exactly what's going on with the floods. Where are they? Who blames who? After this, you will know everything about it. A flood of anger as Russia struggles with raging waters. Residents in the southern Russian city of Orsk protested on April 8th. Some cried, shame on you and Putin help. Whenever some misery hits another country... Putin throws all there. We mean nothing here. So they're so sad that Putin is not helping them, but that he has money to destroy Ukraine. After the Moscow incident, the survivors got all their debts paid. A million residents have been affected here. Half the city is underwater. A million residents have been affected in all of Russia about this flood. Only one city of 500,000 and the surrounding areas. If they want to pay all of those mortgages, that will actually take a huge chunk out of Putin's war chest. Over 6,000 people were evacuated after water broke through a dam. More than 10,000 residential buildings have been damaged. Residents are questioning how the dam built in 2010. I mean, this is... Full capitalist era for Russia, you should build things properly. And they have on paper, they have the building standards, but they don't follow them because corruption and I need to buy Mercedes S-Class, you know. In Europe, we actually follow these standards, so these things don't happen. And if they do, rarely, then the fixing of the issue will be very fast. And there will be an investigation why it happened. People will be put to jail and new people on the positions will not make these mistakes again. This is the difference. Federal investigators have opened a criminal negligence case. The Russian president dispatched the emergency minister Alexander Kurenkov to the city. The emergency minister is approaching. I'll show him to you now. Oh, he's approaching. He will fix our issues. Look at it. Let's slow down a little bit. I'll film him. <coughs> Look at it. With the fancy boat. Russian emergency minister, you should have brought Putin with you. They're quite mad at him because this is... I'm waving to them. <laughs> Floods have hit many regions of Russia and Kazakhstan. The Urals, Siberia, the Volga and central regions of Russia are affected. This is not isolated, not only one uh, Orsk dam bro broke, breaking, it's just uh, a very warm weather in Russia right now for this season. So snow will melt really fast, creating these floods. And yes, this happens. You can get ready for it by building barriers to the rivers and everything. You can, you can prepare as a city, but... They haven't done it because they don't really care. In the neighboring Kazakhstan, over 70,000 people have been evacuated across several regions. So also Kazakhstan is screwed. 
Why do people who have no housing left have to sell out money for pillows and there's no water? She means drinking water, of course. They could have easily made a temporary overpass. When Crimea was annexed, they made overpass for water, but not for us. They want Crimea. We can secede now. We can secede. Look, this is a Russian person saying we can secede Crimea. They have so many resources. In- if you don't know the Crimean story, then yes, the, when Putin annexed it, then uh, Ukraine turned off the water taps for Crimea, turning it into pretty much a desert. So Putin poured billions of USD, billions, tens of billions into that peninsula to keep it any way alive because it was dying out since it flourished under Ukraine but in Russia it was just like a sanctioned hellhole so Putin poured a lot of money into that and people are angry in Russia because they didn't get any of that money and Crimea got it and now they are having this disaster we help everyone but ourselves I don't understand why and we'll keep silent till the end but the regional ministry of emergency situation writes that they are О, русский мир. Это жизнь, это карма. So bad. My friends, you did it. You completed the fundraiser. We are 100% in. If you really want to be part of this project, the link is in the description below. We will be closing this fundraiser at the end of this week. Meaning after this, we'll be fulfilling the orders, the drones, the ray trucks will be delivering in May. But right now, the last possibility to be part of this fundraiser of course if you don't want to that's fine also the goal has been reached thanks to you the viewers you've really made a difference and i'll be showing you in may how we deliver these drones and trucks hello my friends and for the first time i'm not making a fundraiser video for you from ukraine but from estonia my home country i am in front of Kreitworks, an estonian drone company and they have produced something extremely beautiful for us what is this this is not a dgi drone it is not a chinese made drone it is an estonian made drone with estonian technology it's a thermal drone with a range of 20 kilometers it's a recon drone it's everything that right now is done in Ukraine by Chinese drones. And that is bad because Russia and China, they do exchange intelligence. This is our weapon against that alliance. This is the West versus the new Axis, which is Russia and China. And my friends, I will call upon you to donate on this new campaign, which is called the Combined Arms Birthday Party. Because my birthday party is coming up on 24th of April. Buy five of these new drones. We will send them to Ukrainian elite forces, elite drone operators. They will test them out. And this will be the main alternative to the DJI, a non-Chinese, an Estonian product, safe NATO product for Ukrainian troops to use their recon abilities on. This drone will guide FPV drones to Russian positions and Russian tanks, and it will save lives directly. Donation link is in the description below. Through donating, you will help to liberate Ukrainian territory one destroy Russian tank at a time. Let's do it, my friends, like you have done it many times before. Slava Ukraini! My friends, now we jump to Finland and Simo Hauha in the grave is really happy and turning another side because Finland will open a NATO ground force headquarters 140 kilometers from the Russian border. Let's look at it. This is the Russian border. This is the former Finland, Viburi, Viburg right now. With the winter war, this has to be seceded to Russia. This was Finland, but Mikkeli right here, this city right here. Tallinn, where I'm right here, this is Helsinki, and this is Mikkeli. Here will be a NATO base close to Russian border. I mean, Putin really invited this on himself because Finland and Sweden would have never joined NATO if there wasn't an aggression against Ukraine from Putin. Because Finland and NATO, the people have been asked decades if you want to join NATO and they've always said no the majority always said no only after the invasion they say yes we gotta join now this is the last chance so Putin invited this NATO base so close to the Russian border and people are saying oh look at the map NATO is expanding so close to Russian border of course Putin is nervous my friends Russia, with his foreign aggression, is inviting these bases. If there was no foreign aggression, there would be no need for NATO. 
Now, my friends, I'll show you a weird story from Russia. A court in Russian Guban has fined an 86-year-old priest, Viktor Bivovarov, 150,000 rubles in a criminal case for discrediting the Russian military. And you know why? Because this priest wrote this next sentence. This 86-year-old Russian priest, first of all, it's a Russian priest. They should love the priest because Putin is apparently the helper of Orthodox religion. Well, this shows you everything. What this priest wrote is this. The blown up Kahovka hydropower plant has taken many lives. And flooding made almost the entire Kherson region barren. The creators of this supreme evil are completely likened to Satan in spirit. This is what the Russian priest wrote. And here in this video we can see the police officials, you know, guiding the priest down into the court, I guess. He can barely walk. He's part of the orthodoxy part of the church and this doesn't really stop them from arresting him if he goes against the FSP narratives because the Russian church must follow the FSP narratives and it in fact is the lengthening arm of it. So yeah, this is the Russian world. Now my friends, we'll jump to Belarus and Poland because Belarus being a Russian puppet state, there's no even point calling them a country because they have fully been a puppet state of Russia right now. They are attacking Europe. And if you, oh, they're not, they're not riding tanks over the border. My friends, attack can be a cyber attack, logistics attack, a migrant weapon, economical attack, sanctions. This is all war, economic war or hot war or migrant war. It's all war. So European Union has war on their borders and not only in Ukraine but also in Poland and Lithuania against Belarus because Belarus for the past year has been funneling migrants as a human weapon from the Middle East and Africa to the Polish and Lithuanian borders to stabilize the European Union area. Look at it. They're given ladders. These are the immigrants. They're given ladders and they're funneled to the Polish border these are the migrants, they're gathering into huge groups here. This is the Polish border guards, this small group here. And they're fighting right now, actually. Their migrants are gathering, there are hundreds of them trying to get over the border. They broke through one fence, and this is the whole group of them, and the Polish uh, border guards are not letting them through. And now the migrants will go back, because they get, couldn't get through. But this happens very often and it's a deliberate action it's a deliberate human weapon against the eu which takes away eu resources and and attention so we are at war let's not pretend that we're not now my friends i'll bring you an analysis from the finnish nefofella yoni askola for the past few months, rumors have circulated about Iran's supply of Fatah-110 ballistic missiles to Russia. So, Iranian ballistic missiles. There have been rumors about them. According to sources who spoke to rotors in February, Iran had allegedly dispatched 400 of these missiles. General Cavoli, Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, has confirmed in his unclassified written submission to the House Armed Services Committee that Iran has provided missiles to Russia. This is the first official confirmation about it. So the new axis, the global south, whatever you call it, the new axis block. Iran, Russia, China, North Korea. It's not like Russia is the aggressor and the rest of the countries are doing something, but not really. Iran is very directly the reason why Ukrainian civilians are casualties. It's Iranian missiles. It's North Korean artillery shells. It's Chinese radios and military uniforms. They make them in China. So all of these countries are very directly responsible for Russia being able to do what they do in Ukraine, meaning they are at war with the West. This marks yet another escalation by members of the new axis of evil, China, Iran and North Korea. Continue to bolster their support for Russia's genocide and failed invasion of Ukraine, showing that Western attempts and appeasement and pressure on them have had no effect on their actions. The word I want to bring out here is appeasement. This is the word of the week from the West. Everyone who appeases Russia or wants to have a dialogue with them in the West right now, showing weakness to Russia and sending Russia a signal that you can do what you do because we only talk. You can go, you, you can go and punch me in the face. I'm only going to talk to you. I'm not even going to run away or fight. 
I'm only going to talk, hit me more. It's like a masochistic prolongering of this conflict. This is Chamberlain's doing. If anybody wants to talk or have Russia in the peace negotiations of ceasefire, this is Chamberlain's spirit again over Europe. It's weakness. Now, my friends, it's Thursday and we got to do Thursday Buy Me A Coffee monthly members butchering. I am ready to butcher these 10 names to the orbit. Are you also? Let's go. Mikkei Lotteri. Tean Andersson. N. Hill, Bridie Dixon, Matei Zhechek, I don't know how to say that Z with the thingy, Mark Paenen, Pep Tom, you gotta be Estonian, Pietur, Etaoin Carson, Stuart B. Thank you to these monthly members of Buy Me A Coffee. If you like my channel, you know what to do. All of the links are in the description below. And until my tomorrow's video, my friends, be back. Subscribe, push the bell notification, do be notified. Go enjoy the beautiful weather outside. Slava Ukraini and bye-bye.